Welcome to worship on Sunday, August 14th, 2022. Uh, one name has been added to the prayer list since it was printed. That name is Bob. Uh, this Thursday, August 18th, I'll be hosting a talk here called Light in the Darkness, talking about depression and faith. Uh, all are welcome to that event. Uh, the talk will begin at 7 o'clock on Thursday. The next Faith by Firelight will be held at 6 p.m. on Saturday, August 27th. That's two weeks from yesterday. Uh, down in the Grove, there will be s'mores. Uh, there will be Bible games for all ages. There will be a Bible verse discussion. And the walkway to the Grove is now complete, um, and it's more easily accessible for people of all ages. So come on out with kids and grown-ups and young and young at heart and all kinds of people. And then in two weeks, on Sunday, August 28th, uh, we'll have our annual blessing of the backpacks. Uh, all students who are starting a new school year are invited uh, and are invited to bring along a back backpack or some other item that represents the school year. Uh, any teachers or staff involved in education are also invited uh, with or without an item that represents the school year to you. Now, there are two different sheets of paper you may have noticed coming in. One is a big sheet that you were handed, oops, that you were handed coming in. It says cloud of witnesses at the top, and then there's a whole bunch of words on the other side. We're going to use this during the sermon, so just hold on to it. Does everybody have one of these? Cool. The other slip of paper is at the end of your pews on either end. There's going to be a couple little slips like this. Now, these are for a hymn sing we're going to be having. Uh, next Sunday and the Sunday after, the preludes uh, will be hymn sings. We're going to si just sing a couple verses of a couple different hymns, and uh, the way that you get to, uh, to request the hymns that we sing is to write them on these slips of paper. Um, so I, I ask you at some point during today, if you'd like, um, write down the name or the number of a hymn. Um, just put one per piece of paper. If you want to request more than one, then use more than one piece of paper. Um, and then leave them in your pew. And at, uh, after worship today, I'll go and pick them up and put them in a hat, and then next week we'll pull them out of the hat. Whatever we pull out, that's what we'll sing. Um, the only restriction is that the hymn has to be in our red hymnal, uh, because we'll be using those hymnals. Okay. If there, are any, if there are no other announcements I neglected to make, then let us worship the Lord.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And Let us pray. O oh God, judge eternal, you love justice and hate oppression, and you call us to share your zeal for truth. Give us courage to take our stand with all victims of bloodshed and greed, and following your servants and prophets to look to the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the young and young at heart to come forward for story time. Good morning. Do you know what a role model is? What's a role model? 
The perfect student. Okay, that's one way of describing it. How would you describe role model? Someone to look up to. Yeah, do you have any role models? A couple? You want to name any of them? No? <laughs> do you have any role models? Your mom and your dad. Isn't that nice? Um, great. Well, today's story comes from the letter to the Hebrews, and it talks about role models in a very specific way. So the letter goes like this. Some of our ancestors had great faith. Because of their faith, uh, the people followed Moses through the Red Sea on dry land. And because of their faith, people followed Joshua by walking around the city of Jericho for seven days and its walls fell down. And there are many others. Their faith helped them conquer kingdoms. They closed the jaws of lions and put out raging fires and escaped from the swords of their enemies. Although they were weak, they were given the strength and power to chase foreign enemies away. There is such a large crowd of role models all around us. And because of that, we can let go of everything that slows us down, especially the sin that holds on to us, and we can run the race that is ahead of us. So these people, these role models in our faith, help us to see that we're not alone. They led the way for us, and just like they followed God, we can follow God too. And they all pointed to Jesus the greatest role model of them all. Now, we can never be as good as Jesus, but we can follow him and we can trust that Jesus loves us and will always, always help us. And if anybody has helped you to see that, then they are your faith role models. And if you've helped anybody to see that, then you're one of their faith role models. So let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear God, thank you for role models. Help us to follow the ways they have set out for us. And help us to always follow you. Amen. Okay, thank you so much. You can go back to your seats. A reading from Jeremiah. Because Jeremiah preaches the unpopular message of God's judgment, he suffers rejection. Today's reading distinguishes between the true prophet, like Jeremiah, who speaks God's word, and the false prophet who misleads the people through dreams. One is like wheat, the other, the other like worthless straw. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord? Am I, not a God, am I not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said, who, pro who's, who prophecies lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back? Those who, pro those who prophesy lies and, who's, and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart. They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell to one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has dreamed tell the dream, but let the one who has the, my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common like with wheat, says the Lord, is not my word like, like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 82. God stands to charge the divine council assembled giving judgment in the midst of the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show favor to the wicked? Save the weak and the orphan. Defend the humble and needy. Rescue the weak and the poor. Deliver them from the power of the wicked. They do not know, neither do they understand. They wander about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Now I say to you, you are gods all of you children of the Most High. <clears throat> Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, and rule the earth, for you shall take all nations for your own. 
A reading from Hebrews. The author of Hebrews presents us with rich stories in, of faith in a long list of biblical heroes. We find examples of trust in God that enable them to face the trials of life faithfully. In addition to this cloud of witness, we have Jesus, the perfect model of faithful endurance. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they have not been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rehab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered realms, administered justice, obtained promise, promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raising fire, escaped the edge of the sword, one strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains in and imprisonment. They were stoned to death, they were swan in two, they were killed by the sword, they went out in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, pers persecuted, tormented, of whom the, the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were c commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised. Since God has provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that cling, clings so closely, and let us run with, with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who was for the sake of the joy that that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, I have come to bring a fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think I've come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, and in-laws against one another. Jesus also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it's going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. In the second reading that Izzy read today, the author of the book of Hebrews shares stories about some role models in the faith. They tell us about the Israelites who were set free from slavery in Egypt. And they write, by faith those Israelites passed through the Red Sea as though it were dry land. And then they tell us about the Israelites who first arrived at the promised land and encountered an enemy city called Jericho. They write, by faith the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. And they tell us about Rahab, 
the Canaanite prostitute who hid the Israelite spies despite the fact that she was from an enemy people. By faith, Rahab did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. Then the author of Hebrews mentions Gideon, the Israelite warrior who trusted that God would win the victory over the Midianites, even while he was hopelessly outnumbered. Barak, Samson, and Jephthah, who were judges of Israel, whose faith in God's word led them to victory and wisdom. Samuel and the prophets, whose faith led them to proclaim God's word to a people, even when their own lives were at risk. And King David, whose faith in God allowed him to unite the country and rule over a golden age for Israel. The author of Hebrews tells us about these people, these heroes of the Old Testament. Except they're not all heroes. Well, maybe Samson and David were, but the rest? Lots of ordinary people. Ordinary people who had extraordinary faith and who lived out that faith in extraordinary ways. The people on this list were not perfect. Far from it. The Old Testament is clear about that. Samson was a bully. Barak was a coward. Gideon continually put God to the test. King David was a murderer and an adulterer. Yet all these people, at key times in their lives, put their faith in God. At key times in their lives, they put that faith into action. And through that faith, God changed the world. And this is just a sampling. From one perspective, the entire Bible is a series of stories of faith. The Old Testament is a series of stories of the faith of many Israelites who put their trust in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the New Testament is a series of the stories of faith of many early Christians who put their trust in the same God whom they now knew as the Father of Jesus Christ. These stories tell of how God provided for these people, how God called them, and what these normal and imperfect people did in God's name. And the author of Hebrews tells us why it is so important to hear these stories, to tell these stories, to share these stories. They write, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, these people are a cloud of witnesses. The narrative of the Bible gives us a cloud of witnesses, a collection of people who have witnessed the amazing power of God and who have shared it by telling about it or by living it out. The author of Hebrews himself is one of these witnesses by writing this letter, telling us how active God has been in the history of Israel. And because there are so many of these witnesses, hundreds in here, they become like a cloud. There are so many that they all kind of blend together. There's no need to remember whether it was Barak or Samson that God, that God used to defeat the Israelites or the Canaanites. The point is that all these people witness and report and live out the work of the same God. That's what makes them a cloud and what makes their testimony so powerful. So many people have experienced God's love and power and so many people's lives have been changed through it. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. They inspire us. They encourage us. They give us hope and endurance. Through their witness, God gives us hope that we can run the race set before us, which means the challenges that we face in our lives, and that we too can be witnesses. Because the cloud of witnesses didn't stop growing when the book of Hebrews was written. The Bible isn't the final list of all the witnesses of God. There have been thousands, millions of people since those days. In fact, we each have our own cloud of witnesses, our own collection of people who have been role models to us in the faith, who have inspired and encouraged us. Your cloud of witnesses is different from mine. Your cloud may include some people from biblical stories, and it may include many others as well. For me, my cloud of witnesses includes St. Peter and St. Paul, Cleopas and Jonah, the author of Ecclesiastes, and some other biblical folks. It also includes many famous people since then, people like Martin Luther King, like Martin Luther, Paul Tillich, Mr. Rogers. And it also includes many people who aren't famous, people I've known like Nina, Kurt, Tom, Kim, Maritza, Joe, Bonnie. 
All these people have made a huge difference in my life, a difference in my faith. And truthfully, those are just the ones I thought of in a few minutes as I prepared this sermon. I'm sure there are many, many more. And I plan to work on that list this week. And I invite and encourage you to do the same. Your cloud of witnesses might have some of the same people as mine does. Or it might be completely different. But you have a cloud of witnesses, people who have been your spiritual role models, people who have shown you through their words and actions what faith looks like, what it is to trust God. And today I invite and I encourage you to explore who those people are. These big sheets of paper in your, that, that you were given are for that. When you have time during worship today, perhaps while others are receiving communion, give it some thought. Think about who some of the people are in your cloud of witnesses and write down some names. They might include biblical characters or famous people or relatives of friends of yours or, or anybody. People who have persevered, people who have inspired, who have made a difference. Just write down names and then take this sheet home with you. Don't leave it here. Take it home with you and keep adding to it throughout the week as you think of more names. And when you've gotten a lot of people on that list, then I invite you to do three things with it. First, talk with your family or your friends about your list. Talk with them about who has inspired you, how they have inspired you, what difference they've made in your life. Invite them to make a list too and see who you share in common. And second, consider reaching out to anyone on your list who's still alive to tell them that they are among your cloud of witnesses. Now, you don't have to use that churchy jargon if you don't want to. You could just say, my pastor asked us to make a list of people who inspired us, and your name is on my list. Imagine how that would feel for someone to hear that. And third, I invite you to consider what small change you could make in your life that would make it more likely that someone else would include you in their cloud of witnesses. You have been faithful. How can you be more faithful in the coming weeks, months, and years? All these things I just mentioned are written on the back of your sheet. So if you don't remember everything I just said, it's okay. And above all, even if you don't do any of the things that I'm suggesting, I encourage you to remember this. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And therefore, we can lay aside every weight and every sin that clings so closely, and we can run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Amen.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again, living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain your church. We pray for all who dedicate their lives to serving your people. Renew our commitment here at Prince of Peace to help our siblings, not only in our community, but around the globe. Bless the work of our ecumenical and interfaith partners, such as Zion United in Broadheadsville with their pastor E. Ann Merlot, as they work to promote unity among the world's Christian churches. Merciful God. Hear our prayers. Arise, O God, and sustain your creation. We pray for all areas affected by natural disasters those needing rain, and those working to transform the devastation of floods and fires into fertile ground for new life and growth. Fill heaven and earth with your life-giving spirit. Merciful God, hear our prayers. Arise, O God, and sustain the nations. We pray for all elected officials and those in our government. Kindle in them a desire to administer your justice, not theirs. Strengthen those who fight to defend those who are vulnerable and let them stand publicly against all forms of oppression and wrongdoing. Let lawmakers prayerfully consider the well-being of all before making or changing laws. Merciful God. Arise, O God, and sustain those who are oppressed. We pray for those people harmed and humiliated by racist discrimination, discrimination against those with disabilities, deformities, and all people discriminated against based on their gender, identity, or sexual orientation. Rescue us from all systems that degrade our fellow human beings. Let everyone remember we are all the same in your eyes, your children. Merciful God. Hear our Arise, O God, and let us celebrate with our fellow brothers and sisters who have birthdays this week. Lord bless Erica Schutte, Trisha Artley, Leanne Lambert, Diane Kimsey, and Autumn Williams. Let their special day be filled with happiness, family, and good health. Merciful God. Hear our Arise, O God, and sustain this assembly. We pray for this community. Let us celebrate with those who rejoice and weep with those weeping in grief, loneliness, or sickness. Please bring all who need it to your comfort. We include in our prayers Bob, Bob. Jack, Jack, Jane, Jane. Lois, Lois, Donna, Donna. McKenna, McKenna. Donald, Donald, Linda, Linda. Albert, Albert, Shirley, Rose, Rose, Elwood, Elwood. family and friends of Tommy, Tommy, Bob, Bob, Dorothy, Dorothy, Eric, Eric, John, John, Deborah, Deborah, the Dalbert family. family. Merciful God, arise, O God. We pray and thank you for our stewardship committee. They work hard to remind us to use our time and talents for the good of all we meet and to remind us how important our offerings and tithes are. Not only for our church, but also for those who minister to. Merciful God. Hear our prayers. 
Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we remember the saints who have gone before us, especially Maximilian Kolbe and Kai Monk. May we run with perseverance the race set before us until we find our rest in you. Merciful God. Hear our prayers. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. abundance you have set before us a plentiful harvest as we feast on your goodness strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all in the name of Jesus amen, amen. the Lord be with you and Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Amen. Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the stars and seas were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his acts of healing, his body lifted up and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's presence there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen.
Love your neighbor. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.